Hello David. Uh, hi Jess. Uh, so it, it's actually been very long uh, since meeting you. Yeah, last year was the last time. Uh, last year uh, we were playing we were actually playing football. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, who do you think is better, now me or you? It's me. Uh, no. no, it's me. Uh, it has to be me. No <laughs> way. Me. Uh, how can you be the better? Uh, like what? What will make you? How can you say that you're the better one? Than like you. what makes you the better footballer? Because I'm, because I'm faster than you. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm faster. No, I'm faster. No, I'm, okay. <laughs> what? I, I'm taller, which is very helpful in football. It's, it, it doesn't change anything. Uh, but I've been playing it for long, I think. Yeah, even since me. when I was two. When, yeah. when did you start? Me, I, I don't even remember. Uh, okay, then. Funny thing. <laughs> uh, our topic for today will be the same as. Will be close to, like football, how you grow up playing football, and things like that. Because yeah. we're going to be talking about the new creation. And are you born a Christian, or do you grow up into okay. having a relationship with God? Yeah. Just like the way in football. Are you born a footballer? No. Yeah, no, you're not born a footballer. Nobody's born a footballer. Yeah, you just start playing it and you grow up to be a footballer. Yeah. So, in a few moments, we're going to have Pastor Kitabi here. And he's going to be telling us more about the new new creation as he continues the Kingdom series. And David is going to pray for us. Okay, let's pray. God, thank you for this day I've given unto us. Thank you for the time you have given unto us. As we learn your word, pray that you may help us put it into practice and keep it in our hearts. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome once again to this week's edition of our continuing series, the Kingdom series. And um, today I am with uh, David and JS. And I'd like them to introduce themselves uh, and also pull down their masks. I think there are people here who, who, who don't know you. And they, they'll be like, uh, who, who are those who came today? Because they were not expecting uh, such faces. So you can just pull down your mask, greet the people, and then you pull it back again. Hi, my name is David. Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Jack Samuel, and I'm happy to be here. Mm. Jack Samuel, or JS, as we call him. And today we are talking about a very, very interesting topic. But I want to connect it with something that these two guys love very much, and that is soccer. Um, because I know these guys can play soccer every day if I gave them a chance. And, and they've proven it, uh, because uh, I know soccer is enjoyable, soccer is sweet, and soccer is also addictive. But then um, our topic today is new creation. We are being made a new creation. But as we talk about it, I want to get into soccer and say, what, what makes a good soccer player? Uh, let me, whom, whom will I start with? Uh, what makes a good soccer player? What age is someone, does someone know I am a good soccer player? Before I ask many questions, let me just start with that one question. What makes a good soccer player, uh, David? Makes a good yeah. Uh, if he just plays his game the way he wants to, the way he likes, if you feel like you're a good player, then you're a good player. If you're a good player, you're a good player. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let me hear from Jack somewhere. Uh, I think what makes a good soccer player, uh, I, th I think I'll say it's talent, yeah. Talent. Talent. Okay, okay. also hard work, but if you have hard work in something you're not good at, well, you won't be able to become a good football player. So, uh, yeah, talent and hard work. So, when does someone know I'm a good soccer player? Which age? When? Uh, when you're born? When you? When do you know you're a good player? Uh, maybe I'll say 13, 12 years, because at that age, that's when you start. Uh, no, like you start knowing whether you're far much above the rest or your average. Because that's when 
also people like that age is where people start being more active into sports and other things. So if you are far much ahead of them at yeah. 12 years, 13 years, then you can know that you're good. So is it because the coach or the other guys in the game told you you are a good soccer player or you just knew, or one just knows within them they are, they are good? Uh, I don't think it's the coach. See, when you play when you're young, like when you play football at a young age so much, three, four years, once you're older, like you know so much more than them. So I don't think, like, yeah, it's, it can be people, when people tell you that you're a good footballer, mm -hmm. that may also be one. But if you're good, you know you're good. Yeah. Let, me, let, let, let me hear from, from David. How do you know, oh, like you, when did you know that, you know, this... <laughs> Ever since I was a small child, uh -huh. like playing with your friends, then they'll tell you you're a good player. Uh -huh. They like being in your team. Uh -huh. yeah. And you continue enjoying yourself. You continue playing. And, and, and um, how, what would you say characterizes you are continuing to be good? Is it because, yeah, let, let me not give any. What characterizes your continuing being good? Your passion to play. So it's your passion to play? Yeah. You want to add anything else? Uh, not really. Just like, for example, I see people, uh, not me, um, but they, they get a kitambi, <laughs> you know, and, but they'll always be talking those days when I used to be a soccer player. But I'm like, you're not playing, and now you're so flabby, and you know you've gained so much weight. Uh, maybe let me ask JS, what helps someone to continue being a good soccer player? Yeah, even the professionals. As you said, it's passion and also drive. Mm -hmm. Like if you're willing to continue to keep yourself healthy, that's that's another thing. Passion, drive, continue to keep yourself healthy. Basically. Continuing to do that which has always characterized you. Okay. And so I want us to, to hold on to this, um, you can say image, or let me call it symbolism of uh, soccer, because I'm, I'm almost using it directly, the way it is into our Christian lives. Because you've, today we are talking about new creation. And the question is, uh, like, for example, uh, for you, J.S. And, and David, um, was there a time when you made a decision to be a Christian? Or did you just grow and find yourself you've become a Christian? Anyone can start us. Mm. I don't really think there's a time I made a decision. Uh -huh. I just grew into it. So just like soccer, you know? Yeah. Ulianza tuku pigampira. Yeah. And you play together. Ajayas, uh, for you, was it different? Actually, not really. It's just that when you're young, mm -hmm. let's say you hear these Bible stories. Yeah. You enjoy them. Mm -hmm. You just enjoy them as fun and you enjoy just listening to them. But now, when you grow older, they actually have meaning to your soul and your heart and you start to understand them. So I don't think I can, I don't think I can say. I remember this day I decided to follow Jesus because it's just something that continues, yeah. that you get. And, and, and today you're going to move further from the time that you made that decision to be a Christian and now continuing to live with it. Just the same way we are using the story, uh, the, the soccer imagery, where you started playing and you're passionate. But if you stop, you will, you will be talking of when I used to, but not what you're doing. My, my understanding is you can t continue to play at different levels from when you're very young to when you're very old, right? Exactly. And, and that's why we, our topic for today is the new creation. And we want to connect it with the two topics that we've had uh, on the Kingdom series. Um, in the last two weeks, we first st started asking ourselves, what is the kingdom? And 
the big thing there was we are subjects of the kingdom. And also the kingdom is power. And also um, that the king not only rules in our hearts as individuals, but also in everything that, that we do. And then last, last week, we talked about being co-laborers with Christ. That in an amazing way, that God in his own wisdom shows that we are not only the ones who are being redeemed, we are not only the ones who are being transformed, but then we are the ones who will be the, 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 the equipment which will cause that transformation. We are to touch others with the love of Christ. And so today we'll talk more about that, what it means to be the new creation, but also how to sustain uh, that, because, and, and we'll see it from the Bible. So I will ask uh, David to read for us uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 to 9. It is called the parable of the sower, but then I think the appropriate way of naming it is the parable of the soils, because we, um, Jesus talks of the different kinds of soils, and the question is, what type of soil are you? So David, uh, read for us uh, chapter, Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 to 9, and then uh, J.S. will read for us 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, 16 to 17. Actually, that's where the title of our topic today comes from the new creation, and then we'll also add to it uh, a short one, uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. Uh, so David, start us off. The story of the farmer. That same day, Jesus left the house and sat by the Sea of Galilee. Large crowds gathered around him, so he got into a boat and sat down. All the people stood on the shore. Yeah. Then he told them many things using stories. He said, a farmer went out to plant his seed. He scattered the seed on the ground. Some fell on a path. Birds came and ate it up. Some seeds fell on rocky places where there wasn't much soil. The plants came up quickly because the soil wasn't deep. When the sun came up, it burned the plants. They dried up because they had no roots. Other seeds fell among thorns. The thorns grew up and crowded out the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil. It produced a crop 160 or 30 times more than what was planted. Whoever has ears should listen. Okay, thank you very much. So over to JS. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 16 and 17. Uh, okay, so it says, so from now on, we don't, we don't look at anyone the way, we, the way the world does. Time, wait, sorry. At one time we looked in we looked at Christ in that way, but we don't anymore. When anyone lives in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone. The new is here. Okay. And then um, read also Philippians chapter one, verse three to six. Chapter one. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. No, 3 to 6. Uh, 3 to 6. It yeah. says, um, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. I am happy because you have joined me in, the spreading, in spreading the good news. You have, done so from, so, you have done so from the first day until now. God began a good work in you, and I am sure that he will carry it on until it is completed, that we will be on the day Christ Jesus returns. Okay. Um, you'll see that, especially the two verses that I've read, uh, for those who have given their lives to Christ, and um, you're being taken through new believers' classes, for you to understand, uh, if I may use the term, what, what is this that you've gotten yourself into? Uh, many times, um, we'll use the Second Corinthians, 
chapter 5. Um, I, I just moved uh, further a bit into 16 and 17, but normally it is in 17. You are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. And then the other verse is uh, um, Philippians, where it talks of he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in Christ Jesus. And the understanding there is it's a journey that you've started. And in this journey, you will continue. Uh, in, in the last two uh, sessions that we've had as we talked about the Kingdom series, I gave an, an image. How come when you gave your life to Christ, or if someone says, now I believe, how come God doesn't come, pick them up, and take them somewhere safe, where now they will not be sinning, they will not be doing anything wrong, but then we are told that you remain in this world. And that's where the parable of the soils comes in. And I know you've read it before, and I know that uh, Jesus Christ himself gave an explanation of what it means. So I will ask uh, David to take us through the first two soils, you name the soils, and then you explain what Jesus said they mean. And then uh, JS will take us through the two other types of soils and will explain to us what Jesus said they mean. You are not making this up, it's actually in the Bible, but you are explaining it. You don't have to read it, just say it, uh, uh, because you know it. So, the first soil was on the path. Yeah. And then when he threw the seeds, the birds came up and ate them up. So, like, I would say it means that you've learned the word, you've kept it in you, but the devil comes and steals it from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the second one was on rocks. So, like, you, la you learned the word, you kept it in you, but the people around you, they came and corrupted you. They took it away from you. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, JS, you can explain to us the other two types of soils. Okay, so the third one was the rocky places. Mm -hmm. So, in the rocky places, the soil came up quickly because... It was not, the soil was not deep, it was shallow. So basically this says that uh, if your foundation in Christ Jesus is not strong, you will be led astray easily and you will you'll come up, but you will be led astray easily and you're going to fall off the straight path that leads to the kingdom of God. And then the last one is... Yeah, you have actually mentioned the one which David said, so you'll have also to tell us the one about the, the one which fell on oh, good soils, but they were thorns. Yeah. Oh, some, and then some fell on thorns. Yeah. So I think the one that fell on thorns, basically it's, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah. Um, you, you remember what, what it says? And then you'll tell us the one which fell on, on the good soil. I think the one for the stones is what I said for rocks. Yeah, because what the Bible says here is, um, especially in the, in the explanation of uh, the, the, uh, the seed, uh, it, what Jesus gave, he says, the one which, but, but since he has no root, the, the one... The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, and it's the one which you explained. And then the one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. And now um, explain to us the the fourth soil, or the good soil? Uh, the good soil. Uh, 
So it's those, the good fellow is the people who represent the people who listen to what Jesus has had to say and keep it in their hearts and practice it because it bore fruits. Yeah, in fact, uh, do, do you remember uh, in terms of a mathematical understanding of the fruit that was born by the seed? Um, do you remember what percentages those were? Let me read them for you. It says, um, the one who received the seed, uh, but the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it, as you have clearly explained, and he produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times that what was sown. So, in terms of uh, a mathematical understanding of that, that is what percentage? I don't know if you've ever thought about it in terms of percentages. Mm -hmm. He says a hundred times. That is times a hundred. Times 60% and times 30%. And so if you had a thousand shillings, we are talking of 30% of a thousand is? 3,000. Yeah, I mean, 100 is 300, 1,000 is like that. And so, what we are talking about, when we talk about this new creation, it is about giving fruit. It is about multiplying that which you have. It's the same thing that we talked about football. And let's, let's go about um, to football. I mean, where would you place someone like Ronaldo? How much would you say he's multiplying his talents and abilities? I mean, you, uh, you love soccer. Both of you love soccer. But him, he has been given a chance to multiply it much further than that. And so we can see that even in receiving this new creation, when you receive the word and the word lands on good soil, first of all, we saw that it doesn't matter when you started. I know of some people who started soccer late, but they still weren't professional, you know? It, it's not a matter of this one began, began late, and this one began early. But there is definitely an advantage when you begin early, right? Like for you, um, and we don't know, but we, they still say that the worries and issues of this life can still come to you. And, you know, you start losing your faith. And what happens? As much as the world was in good soil, uh, because right now it is sprouting and I believe it's producing seed, uh, producing fruit, but it can still get choked by, by the thorns. And, and so you grew up in a nice Christian family, you read the Bible every day, but then you go out there and people are telling you, you guy, for you to be able to make it, for you to be able to make money. You know, you have to do this and do that. And suddenly you're like, no, you know, my dad, for him, he, 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 he didn't get into business. I know your dad is uh, in, into ministry, right? You know, sometimes um, children like, uh, who are in ministry may say, you should have been in business, you know? And you no, know, we'll be doing this, we'll be doing well. And so you, you decide, you know? What are you working? Yes, Uchini, Kando, Kidogo. Sindi, oh, Ivo, oh, and Asema. You work at Uchini, Kidogo. Nifanya, Adunia, you know? Um, and so that way, we see that this parable comes true that the worries of life are like thorns that 
uh, penetrated into your life and you're not able to bear fruit. But I want us to, to look at things practically because that's why we are here together. Um, I may have the theory here and which we have explained very well. I may have the, con uh, the, the, the even the context we may, we may explain it well. We've gone into Matthew, we've gone into 2 Corinthians, we've gone into first, uh, in Philippians chapter 1. But I want us to hear from you, from David and from you, JS, this new creation, sustaining this new life in Christ. How has it been for you uh, so far? And especially, um, you'll be going to school uh, on Monday. How has it been? And even as you go back to school, how will it be? Uh, I think being with Jesus, not to think, I know being with Jesus, uh, first, you actually know that you actually feel like you should not worry because you know that Jesus has your back mm -hmm. and the, something that I have also related from that is when it says that the good seed produces a hundred times more, Yeah. what I think it means is that uh, the good seed, it represents a person who has believed in Jesus and understood it. Mm -hmm. So maybe the good seed also would mean that he tells other people about God, mm -hmm. which I think that is also now where the producing comes in, because it, it says it produces more than what is yielded. Mm -hmm. So if one seed was yielded, it produces a hundred times more than what was yielded. So I think part of the new creation is also spreading the gospel and mm -hmm. telling more people about it. Okay. But then, in, 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 in your school, are you, are you able to like, lead others to come to the knowledge of God? Uh, it's for the... Christ okay, I can talk with it with my Christian friends, mm -hmm. but it can also be heard because it can be expelled from like, trying to convince someone else in another re religion come into your religion. So you can say that producing fruit is also working within yourself. Yeah. So that your life is a testimony of what God is doing in your life. Would you say that? Yeah, okay, because you cannot like go and tell them immediately like to come to your, your religion. Like yeah, part of your like how you live mm -hmm. can also encourage them to want to know more about yourself, want to more to know more about what you believe in. So, yeah, being a living testimony. Okay. Is one of them. So let me turn also to David. As the same question. How do you live out this life as a Christian, as a young man, with, you know, the things of this world, the, the ones which have been talked about in the Bible? How, how do you manage, and especially, how do you produce fruit? Uh, how I manage, I can see it's only God who can help you manage. Mm -hmm. You read your Bible, pray every day, ask him for guidance to help you. Yeah, and he's He's going to help you in his own way. Yeah. And the other one was... The one, the, how, how do you produce fruit? How do I produce fruit? By reading the Bible and doing what it tells you to do and acting as a good person. Yeah, and as a believer. So that people can look at their lives and say... You know, David is dependable. David can be trusted. David forgives. Yeah, because sorry. what the Bible is talking about, this new creation, and especially what we read in, uh, in, in Philippians, it talks of he who began a good work in you, where we are talking about the fruit, will bring it to completion in Christ Jesus. And the question is, um, as a Christian, are you expecting something from Christ? Let me start with David, and then I'll go to, to JS. Yeah, I'm expecting something from Christ. And what is that? For his, him to help me as I live my life, to help me do things that please him, to guide me and protect me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And at the end of it all, at the end, mm -hmm. I'd say 
all of us, what we're expecting for is to go to heaven. Yeah. yeah. All right. And we'll talk more about that. Let me hear from JS. Uh, that's actually a hard question. Oh, uh, you're saying it's a hard it's, question? Yeah. Okay. Can, okay, but... But uh, give it a try. I don't know whether I can say I expect something from him because he already gave his life for me. Mm -hmm. But I'll certainly say I, I depend on him. Uh -huh. But I don't really expect... Oh, I expect something. I expect maybe protection. Uh -huh. uh, but not. you already know what you're going to get from Christ. So I don't really expect so much because... Uh, I'm saying that because the, the verse that you read in Philippians, it says, He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in Christ Jesus. So like, there's a process there that is going on. And then, oh, let me use um, um, John chapter 3, the famous verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So what is that that you're expecting? Okay, then. Yeah. Okay, okay now I've understood your question. So I expect that if I believe in Jesus, I trust in him. At the end of it all, I'm going to get eternal life. Yes. And, and, and the new creation, that which fuels you to be able to live a life where you're doing the right thing, even when it hurts, you are going through hardships, when sometimes people are enjoying, you know, uh, like I remember when I was, in, I was in campus, and I usually give this story. Um, when when we, 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 this, this friend of mine came to me and he was like, oh, when, since you've given your life to Christ, you know, your life is, for us, we are still chasing some of these things. We want to go out and have fun. And, uh, uh, but you, you, are, you, you've become peaceful and you, you seem to be content with whatever you have. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm really ministering to this guy. When the exams ended, that same guy came to me and he was like, I, I pity you. You know, your life is so hard. As now I'm preparing to go out and have fun. You, you are here jifungiering, locking yourself in your room and you're, you can't go out because you're born again. And I was like, wow, this, this life is it's, it's quite tricky. Because at one point, like you said, you feel like you ministered to this guy and, uh, you know, as you, you're putting it, the fruit that we are talking about here is really being exhibited in, in, in life. But then at some point now it changes and this person is even pitying you and saying, Ay, eh, we are not really enjoying life. And that can be a challenge and even can shake you a bit, but you remain grounded in, in, in Christ. And so I want us to bring this to a close. And uh, we've, we, we are talking about the kingdom. And the kingdom of God is where we start from scratch, as we have talked about. Um, from your own testimonies, you've said you can't remember exactly when you started. And we gave the um, analogy or the image of a soccer player. And we said, even in soccer, some, do, they are just passionate, like you guys are just passionate about soccer. You don't remember when it all started, but you just know that anytime you see people playing out in the field, you'd want to join them. And it's the same, even in Christianity, that you start like that and you continue like that. But from reading um, the scriptures, we see the different types of soils, and especially the one which may really uh, speak uh, about you guys is the one where it was not really, the issue was not the, because it was the seed. The seed that fell on good soil, it sprouted, but it met the thorns. And you know, you can meet those thorns. But the key thing is the good soil. That you fall on good soil, and you continue giving 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. 
because the key thing that is being looked at is the fruit. And we even went further and defined what the fruit is, especially in our age. Uh, for most of us, because we are in school, is concentrating in our studies. And people seeing you, and they are like, wow, this guy is so diligent. Because we are trying, uh, a school um, helps you grow your talents and your skills and your abilities, and especially in the intellectual formation of it. And, and that way, as people look at your life, and when they ask, uh, eh, how, where is JS nowadays? He, he used to be very keen about Christian things. Is he still doing it? For me, that is my understanding of fruit. And you've really brought it out, especially in, in your age, that it is about living it out, and it's about proclaiming it. And when you have a chance, is even leading someone to Christ. But I want you to give like last words about uh, this topic on new creation, and especially connecting it with the soils, and telling um, the viewers out there um, what it means to leave this out as some sort of last words. So we'll start with you, JS, and then we'll finish with David. So just give your last words. Uh, so what I've gotten from this discussion, uh, first is that we, as Christians, we grow. We do, we don't. We're not born. We're not born uh, believing in Jesus. We grow into knowing Jesus and learning more about Him. And the best way to help others and change others, without really talking to them about Jesus, is to be a living testimony, so that our lives can show them how Jesus is changing us. Yeah. Thank you. And to you, David. For me, I would say. It doesn't really depend on the seed, or sometimes it will, which is the word. Sometimes it might depend on the word, and sometimes not, but mostly on your environment, because you might grow in the word and learn the word, but as you grow, your environment is the one which will change you. Like, if your friends are, you have bad company, they're going to corrupt you, and yeah, that's, that's all. So those are the thorns. Yeah. All right. So you've heard it from David. And JS, and we thank you for being part of it. So we'll continue with our series. And uh, for JS, he'll be traveling to school uh, on Monday. And uh, of course, for David, he's still around. And we believe that we'll be seeing more of him. And we'll continue in this series. So please encourage us, like what we are doing, comment about it, and, and even add what your experiences have been, especially in this topic, so that we can continue to grow together and we can continue to learn from each other. May God bless you and may God keep you. Shalom. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in with us today. Hope you enjoyed. And also do not forget to like the video, to share it with your friends, because that is also sharing the gospel. And also subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also click the notification bell so that every time we make a video, you'll be notified. So now I will ask David to uh, have a closing prayer for us. Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you for this day I've given unto us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for what you have learned. Pray that you may help us put it into practice. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.